Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the August 9th, 2024 Long Range Planning Committee meeting. Um, <clears throat> this morning, the first item on our agenda is roll call and identifying voting members. All right, uh, Alan Paul. Here. Rick Sinead. Here via Zoom. Peter Freilinger. Here. Robin Saunders. Portia Hirschman. Here. All right, and you four will be voting. And we also have Rachel Hendrickson. Here. And I think John Anderson's going to join us. Okay. He should be. Maybe he's running. Like... All right, great. Uh, next item on our agenda this morning is review of the minutes of July 12, 2024. Any comments? Move approval of the minutes of July 12, 2024. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. See, Rick? I wasn't here, so I can't. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So we have three, four, one abstention. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda this morning is discussion and possible recommendation to the Ordinance Committee concerning mobile food truck vendor uses allowed districts and applicable standards and license requirements. Uh, could you give us an update yeah, on this? Sure, so we um, have had discussions with several users in the past couple of years since I've been here and even beforehand about food trucks and what we do with them. The town as a whole typically will allow food trucks for private events or if it's a special catered event like main health has some food trucks for the employees. Um, the Downs is going to have an event where they can have food trucks for an event, um, special participants, but we don't have a town-wide way to deal with food trucks, and it's really, we're kind of last to the party, if you will. Um, so this discussion, we've, I brought it up a couple of times, um, the Downs has finally submitted an official request, like we really need to look at this. So I framed what you have in your packet up for the town so we can discuss it. Uh, but then we also have some specific items that they sent me yesterday that are on uh, with your handouts. So give me just a second and I'll share my screen and then we can get into the course. Yeah, and while you're doing that, let the record show that Robin has joined us and so has Councillor Anderson. For you two that just joined us, we just made the video work just right at eight o'clock. So, <laughs> <laughs> true form, always very last, even when I get here 30 minutes early. <laughs> ordinance for you, you guys that are familiar with um, how we normally do ordinances, this one looks a little different because it's a different sort of beast. It's got to be a, an added use in some zoning districts, but then it also needs a license. It wouldn't be something planning would do, but it also has some site plan requirements proposed. So the, the way I'll go about it is the topics that I have it described as which definitions, and so I've borrowed from some of our neighbors to, for, to, for two types, uh, one being a uh, mobile food vendor site where you could have one um, on site of an existing building or location and then a mobile food vendor court. This ordinance does not contemplate at all mobile food vendors that are driving from place to place. This is really just you're going to park at a certain spot, or you can have an actual court where you have more. So at this point, it doesn't contemplate the moving around. So um, obviously, it's still a truck. When you say it doesn't contemplate moving around, it doesn't contemplate park. So it's parking overnight and uh, parking for an extended period of time, or yes. You know, yes. So this is more event-driven. Um, it could be. Let's get into the definition samples and then um, maybe it'll be a little easier. So this is a mobile food vendor site. It's just one. 
Um, one person said so. We have one where I live. Uh, there's a big parking lot kind of in the middle of town, and there's always one food truck there, and they have a picnic table. So that would be a site. And the way I have it right now is that that wouldn't have to go to the planning board. That would be a license that the town clerk with some staff approval and making sure that they meet all of the performance standards, they could go in. But that would also have to be an allowed use in a district. So you couldn't do it everywhere, right? So that's part of this discussion too. And then a mobile food vendor court would be where you had two or more and then a dedicated court. Oh, I'm not sharing this. Is <laughs> I'm looking at very good pictures. <laughs> And that's why I'm like, why am I getting such fun? <laughs> okay, let's try this again. So sorry. You guys, you realize that this is Eric's last day, so if you need to hit look, me. Look at the smile, though. Pictures, yay. Okay. <laughs> this makes a lot more sense now. So this, again, like I was saying, this is just that one food truck and one parking lot. This would be a food truck, uh, mobile food vendor site where you could just do the one and there's certain certain criteria. And then a court um, would be where it's a dedicated space. This, the way it's designed now would have to go through site plan approval. So it would be allowed in certain zoning districts and then it would have to go through site. And then you'd have to make sure that all of the vendors actually have licenses and they need all of those. And that goes to the top part. So it's sort of a multifaceted approach. Um, so I'm assuming when you say not mobile versus mobile, mobile would be like a construction site vendor that goes from location to location to location exactly. every day. So they would drive or, you know, maybe they right. do breakfast at the yep. gas station and they do lunch at Walmart and they do dinner as well. So yep. that would be the mobile person. Okay. So this is not contemplated. That's correct. Question. All right. So the first thing. Actually, that one the sorry, the mobile food vendor would come from that. Right, but you could only do um, the two uses. So the way I have it now is it would be two allowed uses. And in the licensing requirements, it says that you can't do a mobile food vendor unless you're in a site or a court. Okay. So you, you can't just be a mobile food vendor that goes from place to place with this. Okay, gotcha. Okay. It's, I know, it's a full circle sort of what thing was, to discuss. What was your rationale for not doing that, if not allowing that, or not having that be part of this proposal? I am, don't think we're ready for that. I think the fact that we don't even address a food trip court means we're probably really not ready for the site to site. I feel like I like to baby step things sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I think if we can figure out this and we're like, okay, we know where they are, ooh, what do we like, what we don't like, maybe we don't get to that. Has economic development checked in with the local restaurants on sort of like location or conflict of hmm, so interest? So Sedco has like gotten that. back to me that they are on board with it. Um, there are some distance proposals. Do you know if in they've here. done outreach to restaurants or not? Not to specifically to restaurants. Do think we so. think that's appropriate? Because doesn't that give existing fixed site restaurants a, a an anti competitive voice? I would argue that it does. Okay. And I would argue that if we don't, and then we put in this mobile food court, then we're going to have brick and mortar restaurants going. You're taking the money out of my mouth. To I agree. My kids. I agree. So compete better and serve better food. <laughs> I think we can address some of those concerns with the standards too, or distance requirements and things like that. I think um, having the site plan requirement, you also are going to hear from your abutters. So we notice the abutters. So you're going to you're going to get some feedback from there. If someone's like, oh my God, what are you doing to me? I, I think the plan you just have notes from a set code meeting where they may have discussed it at some point. And if they haven't yet, then would they put it on an agenda in the future? I would I would like to support that and make sure that before this comes to council or ordinance that SEDCO does have the opportunity to officially provide feedback. And I also think 
you know, I know the council is going to hear exactly what, what you said, Robin. So just the more we can do to make sure there is broader awareness to the restaurant industry, just so that they know it's coming. And I also appreciate what you said of like, you know, exactly. And give the mobile people. food industry a chance to yeah. communicate, send you their interest. Well, for a lot of people, this is like their first step into Correct. the industry. So you some people should do this before they can get to the brick and mortar. Yeah. So, And sir. maybe after we get through uh, this job, <coughs> get a little comfortable with, about what we're proposing. Maybe I've proposed too much. Maybe I've proposed too little. After that, then I would want to do some outreach and I can mm -hmm. send it and direct outreach to restaurants and now that's fairly simple to do. Um, and then they can give us feedback. Or, yeah. I just feel like this is a home run, you know, uh, specifically, I think about the beaches over mm -hmm. here, you know, like Black Point area. But if you go down to Pine Point beaches, you got all the you know, local seafood and things like well, that around. So. Right now, so they wouldn't be able to do it at the beaches right now the way I have it proposed. And so that's part of this conversation because of the zoning district. Oh, I, want to, I, I want to get to that because I, I think we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to that. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. the, so, the only thing I'd suggest is we talked in the past about doing like we did back in the CPIC days where we met with people who had an interest in some of the ordinances we were talking mm -hmm. about changing, met with them and tried to incorporate their ideas if they were applicable into the ordinance. Yeah. to make it go through faster. I'm not suggesting we have multiple meetings across town, but I think we could probably have a meeting where we invite restaurateurs to come in, see what we're physically proposing for language, get their feedback before we actually give that to the ordinance committee. We can look at it again, do what we can to incorporate what seems to make the most sense, then go to the ordinance committee um, and at least it gives the council a little more power sure. when it comes in front of them to say, well, why didn't you, you know, why wasn't that part of the vetting process in the past or, you know, would a joint meeting with Setco make sense then or a joint thing? That's what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 I mean, I feel like it's really economic development. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, we set up, um, something in May for some standards and our impact piece with Setco's help. And so we can do the same thing for targeted restaurants, even some food trucks. Some of the people that have contacted us wanting to do. Yeah, well, I would say I would, yeah. I would want to have both. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Groups yep. invited. So there's not yeah. this yeah. behind the closed door. So, and so again, the council can have on the record some feedback from both, both yeah. perspectives. It'll move it through our process faster if we know that there's been significant engagement as part yeah. of the recommendation. This is one of those good opportunities. Yeah, and so just moving forward, are you all comfortable with the two different uses and that approach? Yeah, of that? Sure we're going that. So the next part about that um, is really deciding where we think those would be appropriate. So I put together just a quick table with our residential zoning, um, and I haven't put that they would be allowed anywhere in those zones. But keep in, keep in mind, special these exception of the Blue Point Park Park parking lot, <laughs> um, which is around the corner from my house. <laughs> <laughs> so we can. Um, but uh, uh, there is a serious one in there. Um, We've done this by zone, and this gets to my question mm -hmm. here. We've done this by zone, but there are resources within some of these zones, like ball fields, um, where we might want to designate a few spots for a site. The town might want to designate a few sites for a site. Um, uh, and um, uh, to, to facilitate different things. Um, and the other thing is we probably want to have um, some sort of a zoning exception process for those excluded zones, um, given that a lot of those zones do have some areas that have traditionally okay. been um, uh, food sites. Okay. Uh, 
That's my exception comment. It's only comment. Okay, great. The other thing I just wanted to, to walk through only having the two zones, the CPD and the, um, the large industrial zone for um, the site. What was the logic on that one? Just a place to start the discussion. Yeah, yeah I would probably put it across the board. Um, yeah, I was. For uh, the one site, I just didn't know how comfortable you all would be with that recommendation. I was thinking in particular um, the BOR um, and the TVC districts. Um, That's sort of what I was thinking too. Yeah, I'm not sure about Pygus Parkway um, because those are big, bigger sites that have limited access. Correct. Yeah, those are. Um, uh, they don't have the big parking lots and the big sort of open right. access areas. With, like the um, the Haggis Parkway plots I'm used to have like a driveway and yeah. a closed parking lot area. Which is well, that's a good. Like, let's talk about the Cabela's parking. <laughs> would that be a place that um, would be appropriate? Or four? Four, just one. One for one. The one is what we're talking about now. If you just come in. And the one, keep in mind, remember, it doesn't require a site plan. It just comes through staff and gets the permit. Their underlying zoning is B3. Can you make it so that the timing on the lights makes the road easier? <laughs> no, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, that's kind of the site that I envision. Yeah, yeah. And so similarly, um, the um, the main med parking lot site mm -hmm. um, up on uh, the intersection with the 295 connector. Those are big open spaces <laughs> that, um, that would be, that are near to a lot of workers or a lot of Throughput in the Cabela's instance mm -hmm. um, on retail and a lot of workers. Um, yeah, that would make sense. What do you all think about just putting P kind of across the board on the top too, or just the one? Yeah, I'm thinking like Eastern Trail. I mean, there are a number of, of parking areas okay, along the Eastern Trail. And so mm -hmm. could a truck come along on the weekend and set up along the Eastern Trail for breakfast and lunch? Mm -hmm. So it sounds like now, okay, so it sounds like for this, the mobile food vendor court, which requires site plan review, that's definitely a zoning. But the one sounds like might not be a zoning that I can put in a zoning district. Because like the Eastern Trail, you're gonna have random zoning along the way, some of the residential. Yeah. So it might be more specifically <clears throat> license driven with performance standards for location. Is that that's kind of what I'm hearing from y'all for the one because we just don't I mean it, it's relatively unknown um, but you can see where if one started the idea would percolate mm -hmm. um, and certainly I mean you've got the concession here so the beaches you've got some you know like high school you, I mean there there are just a whole lot of of balls in the air here. Okay. Yeah. This is why the scab hasn't been picked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's not bad. <laughs> this, is, you know, yeah, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, as you start talking about places like the Eastern Trail, that that's attractive, but then we need to examine uh, some of the requirements for a, for a site. So if it's a single truck, um, do we want to set up areas specifically for a single truck because they're going to need access to electricity because, as I recall, someplace in here says no generators. That's for the court. That's for the court. So, okay, so. This is my proposal for this conversation. Um, let's take off the one site and let's move on to court because I need to do some um, rethinking and to your point, like, deal more with the license requirements and the location requirements. So let's just strike mobile food vendor site where it's just one and let's talk about the mobile food vendor court. And that one is the one that is by district, would go through site plan uh, process and then have a license. Is that okay? Because I don't think, I think we could get lost. I like to have something for you all to react to. Take it through the site plan process. The applicant owner of the property. So, 
owner of the property. Yes, owns yes. The so the, the, oh, okay. You, if you own a piece of property yeah. and you're in TVC and you want to have a food truck, or okay. you would come through with the site plan. Okay. And then you could have different vendors. Okay. So as the property owner, yes. then I'm then charging some type of Yes, rental is really rental for whoever comes. Yes. Yes. I'm, also res collection. I'm also responsible for all of those things, providing yes. electricity, water, sewer, bathrooms, yes. pedestrian connectivity, whatever. You're creating the space, and then if I have a truck, I go get my license through the clerk, and then I can come onto your space. I may only okay. stay a month, yeah. I may not sell anything. Yeah. And so they can still have another person come in. So that's okay. So, so then that that owner is then responsible for any violations uh -huh. that happen yep. by the vendors, by the public. Well, that's a good one. Is it? I would assume that they are not responsible. For example, for code violations that in take place in the vendor, right. within the box of the, of the truck. Right. Right, because um, that would be handled by a health inspection or something other than the <laughs> owner, but the owner would be responsible if trash got out of hand or if there are you know, seagulls or if there is um, a discharge from the seagulls. Yeah, yeah, discharge from the truck. Um, but inside the truck, that becomes kind of a, I think it becomes a property issue. So let's go through these and I think it'll help us. Um, so for site plan requirements, examples, um, this is what I have that, you know, they would provide the location the orientation of the vendor pad. So they would basically show if they have an acre, they propose five food trucks on there. They would have to show um, permanent electrical and any other necessary utility connections, the location of proposed dining areas, uh, any pavement, trash enclosures, landscaping, all of those things, normal site plan requirements, circulation for pedestrian, bicycle, and vehicle traffic, um, uh, any restrooms, and then parking. And so those are just kind of like a catch-all of everything you would have to show. But the next one I think is the more important for discussion. It's the performance standard examples. <laughs> Um, yes, one, one last question on site requirements any storage facilities that might be okay because mm -hmm. if you're going to have uh, movable seating and chairs and winter and so on you're going to end up with some kind of storage and where's the bathroom I just see that. so that's a good question do we want to um... you just mentioned it so I, I... yeah it's like if you prefer so the site plan requirements are just show everything you have proposed and then this one we're going to talk about performance standards is what is required um, so this first question and we did receive some in input on this one uh, so i have that you have to have permanent electrical connections and use of generators is prohibited um, i know in my experience, when we've had food truck courts, I think this is one you want to keep. But we've also gotten some feedback that maybe generators should be allowed. Um, I'm open to conversation on that one. No generators. I don't think you should have generators. No. If you want a food court. Yeah, if you're going to do a permanent no. food court. Now, if you wanted to, to your point, you guys sent in this with a concern about generators. Maybe there is a part going through the site plan process. Maybe there's, if it's, so this has to be for the whole town. And um, I know I don't want to let too much out of the bag for you guys and speak to yourself, but I know that it may not be a permanent food court. Right. And so maybe through the site plan process, there's an opportunity to talk about that. Yeah. Um, it's to activate the space until we get to the next step. Right. right. For, yeah. for, Brick and mortar yeah. restaurants. But so, we so. require it of a brick and mortar, and this is multiple vendors coming in. So I don't see starting it off as just like, say, you wouldn't just do act crap and then have the vendors come, right? I, I, think, well, I think that's the desire from this particular request. <laughs> and, 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 
if we pave it, what, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going can, to can stay we have paved. discussion internally. I, I mean, I, I this is one. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, we will we will offer public yeah. comment. Yeah. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. sorry. Yeah. No, I get it, but I think we need to talk about yeah, it for sure. without being biased by the curve. Definitely, definitely. That's why this is written for the whole town, right? Yes. So I want yes. you all to consider. And I, I guess so. I, I think I need to oh, Sorry, Rob. Thank you. Yeah, I just, I, I think that packed, packed uh, gravel is, I think we'd already talked about it in this meeting, right? That it should be on a paved surface. Did I hear this or no? Maybe when I went into the bathroom to get a tissue, I missed one. But oh, I think uh, Peter said something about it. Okay. No, I, I don't think I, somebody I, said something. I was actually going to ask a question. She had mentioned you. You live in Arundel, right? Uh, no, Kima. Kima. But there's that one on Route One. Mm -hmm. I think it's in kind of a part of Arundel. It's, it's, it's in Arundel that is packed gravel, mm -hmm. Um So now I don't know whether that's a good experience or a bad experience. I'm just observing that that's something that's been done. Mm -hmm. um, the one in uh, Wells Coggins is packed gravel too. Okay. It's Westbrook's. They're a little higher. Um, uh, and the other thing is public restrooms. I think I think that is a, that is a, a, an un whatever it was we call. They just need to be there. A non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Thank you. Like if you're gonna have people there, you gotta have a place for them to go wash their hands. What's the concern on pack gravel? Again, I'm agnostic, so I'm, I just I can't, I'm not sure I have a view one way or the other. Sure. So um, they're going to probably a high amount of um, oil and grease if we're doing oh, okay. fry, uh, fry fry yeah. uh, things. Um, so it's porous. It, it, it's it's semi porous. I know we treat it as impervious area when we do land use management, but um, yeah. I feel like if it's packed gravel, then we have to have certain then we have to have certain uh, spill prevention and, con and controls in place then. Okay. That's helpful, I just, yeah, I yeah. Sure. yeah. I, I had one question of um, clarification regarding generators. Is this um, fuel powered generators only? Because uh, I'm thinking <clears throat> eventually we're going to have solar powered and somebody could put up, you know, panels and, and operate some on solar. So I just want I just want to clarify, is this use of generator fuel power? Yeah. And that would now speak up, Rob. Now that, thank you for that for, uh, clarification. Because that if we allow generators, I'd be less comfortable with packed gravel because you've got gasoline and um and you, you you've got to keep refueling the generator. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So um Okay, so this first one, each vendor patch should be equipped with electrical connections, generate fuel power generators is what it is. You know? um, and then we have mobile food vendors shall not conduct business or operate the public right away. That sort of gets into that whole weekend drive. Yeah. Then um, I have mobile food vendors should be required to park on paved or other approved surfaces. Is that okay? <laughs> so I was contemplating because we allow, I mean, you could technically gravel, you could in town, you could have a gravel parking lot. You have to build it to the same standards as pavement, so it's kind of silly, um, but we do allow it. So that was part of it. But you could also propose, I could also see doing a food truck court on some. Like pervious pavers or something else that might be attractive. I don't know. Just an idea. Are you proposing that it's not pervious pavers? No, I'm just proposing that it's say paved or other approved services, and then it will be other, subject to planning board oh, or other approved services with appropriate SPCC measures, spill prevention control and countermeasures. Um, they have to have an they have to have an SPCC plan. Okay. Spill prevention control and countermeasures. Gotcha. Gotcha. Shall not set up within ADA accessible parking space. No food measures. Some of these are similar, so they're just like see which one you like better. Um, some they're duplicates. Uh, so no vendor shall impede the flow of traffic, interfere with general ingress and egress to and from property, public or otherwise. 
for patrons, pedestrians, other vehicles. This next one is kind of the uh, shall not impede safe movement of vehicular and pedestrian traffic. It's kind of like just different examples of ordinances that I found. Um, then I have one in here about the 20 feet of fire lanes, fire hydrants, or fire connections. So all this is really just probably all two, two bullets when it ends And up. all of this will be required on a site plan uh -huh. review process. Yeah. So that site plan should remain on site at all times. And, and so that people understand that you can't just like, Will they really move around? Really yeah, move yeah, around yeah, that's a good from time to time. The site plan stays on site so that they're parking within the the established um, boundaries. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, and then I have one more in here honestly then if you then labeled them each you could you could use it for marketing to say this is where each of the vendors will yeah it could be really it could be a cute little map yeah. it doesn't have to be a yeah. site plan exactly that just needs to be a part of your um and then we've got location and service limitation these are samples um except no drivers obviously pedestrians only then there's a couple of different examples on um Restaurant distance. So this one is you cannot be located within 100 feet of the primary entrance of an open and operating fixed location food service. Um, and then there's one on here that you can't be uh, located within 200 feet of a residential structure. I, I, I just want to back up just a little bit on the 100 foot limitation mm -hmm. or any other limitation that's going to be listed here. We're imposing a limitation on that vendor, on the food court vendor. What if the food court is established? Can a person come in and establish a restaurant 75 feet away? Oh, right, like the opposite. Like the opposite. Yes, the opposite wouldn't apply, I suppose. So the that's something that's a great point. Yeah. Well, it's grandfather. Okay, I want to think about that. Well, a there would, yeah, there wouldn't be any grandfather, and it would just be that you, I own a food truck, and I am 100 feet from Peter's restaurant, and then you come in and open a restaurant right next to Peter. You don't have to worry about either one of us. You can do what you want, Alan. But then, <laughs> but then the food court is within 100 feet of Alan's Oh, yeah, restaurant. yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, gosh, but it would be a and I'm like looking a for what happens now if, for example, <laughs> may not ever happen. For yeah. example, it's Primarily a summer business, right? Because it's walk out, primarily. Um, one summer, for some reason, it's not functional. But the next year, it's going to be. Does that mean now that they can't restart because of the 100-foot limitation? I'm just, I guess I, I'm just looking at it and saying, I don't want, if we do this, we should not prevent the food court to have any issues because some other vendor comes in sure. and interferes with these rules. Okay, I'm just going to add to the end of that sentence or eating establishment at the time of approval. And then they're safe. There you go. And yeah, then, and then they don't have to worry about it. All right, okay, so that's a good point. Envision this going forward, Alan. I think of the food court as being operational even if there's no food truck in it. Okay. So in other words, you'd have to formally shut the entrance yeah. the food court to... The court is the approved piece of property. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep, yep, yep. It's like a restaurant that closes gotcha. at the end of the season. Yeah, you know, right? I, I don't... If we're going to go through this process and make vendors go through what we're saying here, I want them to have some protection, too. Certainly. Yeah. I think that's a great point. Are you all comfortable with the 100 well, feet? Is that a good... Place to kind of start the discussion. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, I, yeah exactly. Yeah. Started for ten, um, but I, I do think there's a question in my mind here. There's the vendor, which is the owner or, or an operator of the truck, mm -hmm. and then there is the owner of the food court. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think there's a distinction between those as to who's the vendor. And, we and define what here. their responsibilities. Exactly. Are. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and I think I would just say that as this is written, there seems to be some blending of the two concepts. Exactly. Oh, you're totally. You know what we should do. Um, Actually, I'll put a mobile food pad site instead of vendor should replace a lot yeah. for the yeah. 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 
because, yeah. because when, once it goes through the planning board, you have a, a yeah. permanent site. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. That has vendors. Correct. And but we're not in in this case. The planning board isn't addressing the vendors at all. It's addressing the facility. Yeah, exactly. the planning board is designing the facility, and then whoever wants to come in can come in through the licensing process. Which is why I think it's smart that we're doing this first, and then we can deal with the roaming truck. Yeah, concept. I think so. I think we can learn from this and yeah. figure it out. Yep. Let me point out that you've got no food vendor may operate within three feet of any other food vendor. And then the next uh, bullet, a yeah. five foot clear space shall be maintained around the mobile food vending unit. So it should be, both should be five feet. That's, those or, are just like, which one do you like best? I, I like the five. I like the five feet. And five feet actually on the, the uh, five feet clear space, which means it's really 10 feet between vendors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. on each side. So you've got a five feet strip around each vendor. And so when I come back, that one will say a five foot clear space shall be maintained around each mobile food vending pad. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and so then, um, but then I'm hearing people say that no food vendor may operate within 10 feet of well, any other food vendor. That becomes by definition five because five. of the five plus five. Yeah. yeah. I'm going back to the 100 feet. Okay. I don't like it. <laughs> don't like it. I don't like it because you can have two restaurants side by side, brick and mortar. Why should we prevent? Let's take it out and see what the people say. And see if the restaurants come back and go, oh my God, what have you done? And go, oh, we'll put it in. I mean, let's not, if you don't like it and it seems prohibitive, then let's not put it in. If well, I'm just saying it feels like we're playing by a different set of rules for the same type of business. Yeah, I totally get that. Let, let me ask what, what, what buffer requirement do you, uh, do you anticipate around a food court? Oh, uh, just normal setbacks. For the based on the district, 10 feet, I, they, it varies 15 to 25 feet based on the zone. Because, uh, I mean, in effect, the buffer also can yeah. be used to determine a distance from, yeah, no, I, I, I get that. So, no, I, I think there's something to take a look there's at. There's already there. setbacks, and so you'd already have to adhere to those, so you're gonna have that distance. So, <clears throat> I'm more concerned with, um. It, it, I, I understand your point about a, a restaurant wanting to come in, like say a vendor does so well, they have to build their own sort of, you know, get around thing. I get that. I'm more concerned with, I don't know, are there any restaurants at, at the Downs already? Or if we go to Cabela's, I'm thinking about mm -hmm. Thai Nine and I'm sure. thinking about CDOT right there. I think you should have to get like, you know how, like, when you do site plan review, you have to get all your neighbors in a butters and have a neighborhood meeting? Yeah, that's I what know. I would, well, you yeah. don't have to do a neighborhood meeting, but okay. that's what I was, no, but when you do a site plan, you do notify the butters. So that's right. what I was saying. If yeah. we have that problem, we're going to hear from those Yeah, butters. I just feel like you need, there need to be robust conversations with the existing restaurants. I, and to Alice's point, I kind of, I'm like, well, if another restaurant opened behind Sea Dogs, they would just get their butter notice. And it's, you know what I mean? Like, really good that, yeah, that's what that I was kind of thinking. Really you, that Cabela site uh, could probably hold six more restaurants. Uh, and, yeah. and, and there would be no, there's nothing for the planning board to say, no, you're close to another restaurant, you can't go there. Or see so I think that's kind of so, yeah, I mean, the that's, same thing in what Alan's kind yeah. of saying, like, uh, we're kind of making the little guy have to go extra. I don't but, see the men, I don't I, see the owner of the, the pad being a little guy. Yeah, yeah, I talk sure. to them. exactly that. That's why I want to make sure we do that. Yes. Sure. Okay. So oh, sure. I don't want to. I used to. Sorry. I used to build franchise restaurants, and one of the keys for franchise restaurants is they wanted to locate where there were other restaurants nearby because they became a destination. Yeah. And so the key, even on the Cabela site, is the more choices you've got. In a place, you're going to draw more people to that right. because they don't have to make decisions. Right, and right. it's different clientele. Sitting down for yes. just in Absolutely. a restaurant is different than yeah. 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 so There's I, a place in Dallas called Restaurant Row, and you could go to every restaurant in like a two mile radius that you could ever imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. Just like the uh, soccer water bottle. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's those in Dallas too. <laughs> so I, I think letting the distance. Um, Kind of be out there, but 
not defined at this point. Yeah, I think getting feedback. I think um, we're okay. lying. Maybe pose this as a question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. I like that. Uh, let's see. What about the residential structure buffer? Again, I'm uncomfortable with the setback requirements per setback. so because again Cause the point a restaurant could locate within the, the same the, district. Same district. Yeah, the so, same thing. Yeah. Okay. Just maybe fall back on the zoning. Yep. Underlying zoning should really and again just for clarity, I'm thinking about this as the food court site. Yes. yes. It's not the truck. This is center. just a food, food We're court just site. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's skip this one. And parking? This mobile, let's go to the mobile food vendor court parking. Okay. Um, so I have questions. <laughs> what do we think, you know, for parking um, is reasonable? Because you may have a food truck court, it kind of depends on the food truck court size, right? Like if you're going to have four, you're going to have 15. So is... Well, and again, a, I think the Cabela's parking lot one is a good object example. Do you need six exclusive designated parking sites on a zone that already has 800? Right. Um, similarly for the, yeah, the main, med, um, the main health mm -hmm. facility up there. They've got a gigantic parking lot. Um, do spaces need to be designated for the exclusive use of a food court if main health decided to facilitate a food court on that site? I don't think that makes a ton of sense. I can kind of see that. But that's me. I can kind of see that maybe like the Martin site where the Starbucks just yep. went in. So that still has ample parking, but say they designated a portion of that as a food truck court and had like four. Mm -hmm. And I can see um, maybe if they were busier, Starbucks going, hey, your people are parking. And if parking becomes mm -hmm. an issue, maybe we have ample parking. Part of the next discussion, <laughs> um, maybe having some sort of designated spaces at least. I mean, we have issues with a Mottos and a Vesta on the, you know, like so. I can see where it's like that's my parking space. That's my parking space. Maybe what, having some a limited number designated. How, how but much? Up to site plan review still. So I, I, you I might have you. Might, a, a mobile truck might have more than one employee and who does not arrive on the truck. Live. So Live. that it would be, I, I think some spaces need yeah. to be designated, um, but it is, Maybe one that, that's a place where you start to look at flexibility because it really does depend upon the site. Yeah, exactly. exactly. It, it, like it, 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 you know, as you look at it, you can start to see, uh oh, mm -hmm. we're going to see some problems. We're going to see some problems here. So we would require as a planning board X number of parking spaces yeah. be constructed as part of the construction of of the site and then yeah. clearly mark employees or something, you know, what customers of. So let's start with one for per vendor pad site. Because that would at least get. Yeah, because plus one ADA. Plus. Yeah. I think do we want a statement? Maybe additional sites may be required by the planning board through the site review process. Yes, because I think you know if you go in a Cabela's planning board, it's really like you're good. Just put up a couple <laughs> exactly. of signs. But if you go in on an open field that there's nothing around, you are going to have to build some parking, okay. right, or yeah. provide. Some if I'm, there's not on street already or something. I'm, I'm not sure what ever happened, but Dunstan's habitated. Um, um, they've got a pretty big parking lot in the back. Um, I could see them potentially wanting to have a couple of, uh, of you know, a Chinese spot mm -hmm. and to, to suck more people in to drink beer. Um, but mm -hmm. at some point, that parking lot might get constrained. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Cabela's one's never going to get constrained. The Martin's one probably will never get constrained. Um, but there are sites where I could see you might have that. So. Okay. It feels like this might be a learning opportunity. Exactly, and also if we're talking about constructing a new one somewhere at I don't know the Downs or wherever, I think I think we do need to, uh, as part of the developer's responsibility to lay out, they should have at least like you're saying, one per pad one plus ADA, and then um, and again give this 
planning board some teeth to require more as exactly. necessary. Yeah. And then according to depending upon the context. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and and if they are relying on other others, like whether it's Cabela's, I think they should have to have a shared parking agreement. So that you're not getting calls all the time. Right, right. Okay. Well, I'm thinking of like Cabela's. I'm thinking that the only person who could develop a site would be the, the, the people who own the parking lot already. Yeah. So um, by definition, they would have a shared. You know, Not always, because it could be a sub sub person who comes in and says, "I want to." Just okay. like you wanted to build an Applebee's in the corner of yeah. the Cabela's, you'd say, "Can I purchase this from you, or can I rent it, lease yeah, this it. from you?" Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I, I see that there could be a. Okay, I got you. I got you. Just right. making sure that we're still talking court. Yes, just court. We're not talking about anything else. Right now. <laughs> Maybe we should just do court, and then yeah. if we like it, come back and do yeah. it together. I think it'll be a learning process. I think it confuses it when I'm trying to do one and the other. The other thing I was just to say on the vendor stuff, there's a bunch of stuff on the vendor stuff that feels like it starts to veer into health inspections. It is. That's licensing. Yeah, that's like That's okay, a whole gotcha. different, like, I'm... Which is not us. I, it's not you, but I wanted you to see where it okay. is captured, because <clears throat> I help them with those ordinances, too. Okay, so, got it. Yeah, that's why this one's a little unique. Um, so, hours of operation, I have a couple of different examples in here. We could, um, you all have to feel, is... Can I go back to what do we allow for working and mortar? Well, we stipulate hours of operation for brick and mortar. But what we stipulate are the, the, the light levels of Lighting. security. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. But I'd say we should kind of not marry them, but we should probably have them be equivalent to um, whatever a, a brick and mortar operation would be held to. Getting to the light levels, <clears throat> if you're requiring um, light levels to change. Uh, for a brick and mortar, say, you know, no extreme light after XYZ, then the same should apply. I think ending time for a food court because you're going to just shut everything down. Yep. Yeah, I mean, this is this, um, then we also would get into the question of security lighting, but that becomes kind of a normal site plan mm -hmm. review, looking at exact lighting, making sure it doesn't go over into spill over, the yeah. lot, spill over. Um, dimmers and, and the whole bit, especially if you're near a resident. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's part of site plan. Um, I have a question about noise. Since most of the most of the food courts, the, the truck courts, um, <clears throat> customers are going to eat outside. Will there be enough of a buffer between the court and a residential area? To particularly the in, for the weekends when things could get very much. Yeah, and beyond that, one of the things that I was thinking as well was one of your food trucks could be an ice cream guy with his music going the whole time. Well, so let's add in a noise. Because I know some areas would have. I have noise in licensing. Yep. I, think, I think I have it. Because I think that's a concern, like music and blaring and just people in general. Getting drunk. <laughs> but but on, the, on the noise one, I just want to make sure that it's equivalent to what we would have for a brick and mortar place that want to have an outdoor seating area. It would be the same. It would be our good neighbor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That that would that's what I want it to mount to, rather than having something. We have a, a decibel reader. Yeah. Do you require any berms or um, plantings that would help block noise when you're looking at brick and mortar establishments? But brick and mortar does have landscaping requirements. And if there, uh, some districts have bigger buffers between residential districts. So once again, that, that becomes part, is included in the site plan review mm -hmm. if it's a, a court. Uh, in terms of any landscaping, um, it's actually a really I, good. I don't think you know, I can't see where where we would require berms because we don't require berms 
between commercial units. Um, and if we're that close to a residential, then the question is, should it be there, period? It should be there, period, exactly, yeah. Um, I mean, typically, I could be wrong, probably am, but typically you're gonna have a food court in an area that already has a draw, right? I mean, you're not gonna have a, I'd be amazed if somebody wanted to put a food court in the middle of a residential zone, because what's the draw gonna be unless the food court food is that good? Well, that's kind I of the would, Arundel example, right? I, I would say that sounds like it, it's totally a common sense answer, but our zoning, say like Harmon's Farm, where the food, um, where the little farm stand and the ice cream shop is, that's like kind of a perfect little spot for a couple of food trucks. It could be because it's a meeting place and it's well traveled. It's an RS zone. It's yeah. not, you know, so that thinking about that sort of situation. Or the farms that do weddings. Someone wants to have that. Well, that's an event. That's an exception. Well, and I'm, I'm thinking about that one in Arundel, which is kind of random on the side it's of the room. Except for it's across from the biker bar exactly. and the biker hotel um, and the pool and stores and like that. Well, and it's got the intersection where you go down to, to the back of yeah, the back yeah. or it's a kid. Um, so, but again, uh, uh, um, that section of Route 1 is relatively random. It's so random. Yeah. So, um, so it, it does random. exist. Yeah, yeah. But it works. I mean, they're. They've been there, um, the same vendors, they come back and they're very well traveled. Yeah. Rick? Just a question. Um, a lot of these things tend to be one off. Like uh, <clears throat> I went to the um, Porsches in the Park thing a couple Saturdays ago in South Pole and at Bug Light. And there must have been 15 food trucks that were lined up for that day. They certainly weren't par parked on pavement. Um, the Land Trust's annual dinner next Thursday evening it has food trucks out at Broad Turn Farm. I don't think they're going to be parked on a paved surface, and they're probably within 100 feet of, of Stacy and John's house. Is this intended to apply to those situations? No, I've added in exemptions. And so if you're doing any sort of event, um, you don't Like a to... wedding or something yeah, like that? Yeah, so Rick, I don't know if you can see on the screen, but the exemptions so far, if it's gonna be on the property less than 15 hours, uh, or if you do a private catered event uh, for a limited time, you don't have to do it. And then town-sponsored events. Okay, good. So I'm trying to capture Thanks. those, because I don't, this is really not intended to, this, this isn't really the, the situation where somebody has an area for three months out of the year and the same bunch of trucks are parked there every day, that sort right, of thing. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. Thank you. It's, it's basically a baby brick and mortar, you know, kind of thing where it's like, this is a restaurant you go to, but there's six choices. Well, why did the main start it as a food truck mm -hmm. and then opened up here? It's probably, yeah. I mean, so you have. People use it as a trial. Do I have enough business? And I, I'm excited about it because honestly, there's not a lot of options to eat lunch really quick here. I don't have time to go in and order and sit. So th this really appeals to me as someone who works there. I get to pop in and try something <laughs> different and go back to my office and eat. Well, like selfishly, in the summer, the established restaurants fill up, and mm -hmm. as a resident, you kind of get stuck in queue. Um, whereas if you had more options, at least the mm -hmm. queues would be smaller. Which then reduces your parking demand because you're not sitting for a period of time waiting for correct. Mm -hmm. The food trucks at Fort William Park, that is state property or town property. Town property. And I'm trying to remember, I don't go there that often. Um, those food trucks are not on pads, are they? No, they're not. So how would this affect? something like that we don't, we don't have anything allow, right now we don't allow anything like that right now yeah we wouldn't we don't per, we don't permit that situation okay we don't allow it on town property okay only as an event only right. an event i'm just thinking like town parking lot like a high school in the summer would be great yeah but we would we could go through a site plan process we a village unless we want to totally exempt town-owned property 
Yeah, because I was thinking from the beach perspective, like the um, the Pine Point parking lot um, would certainly be popular. And with the fact that, that Emily's shack has never um, has reopened since COVID, um, there's a brick and mortar spot there, in other words, but nobody uses it. Um, and, uh, or it hasn't been used since COVID. Um, uh, yeah. This is not addressing. Beach areas. It's not just exactly right. Right. We took that one off the table because we're just addressing, we're using the court based on the zoning for the beach area. Some, there's some TBC in some of the beach areas. There, yeah, I was going to say there, there's um, a little bit. Um, and then the whole entrance to Pine Point is uh -huh. basically TBC. So that so. we've added, that would be okay. That area would be okay. I feel like we should try it. And then give it a few years and see what happens. And then if we think, oh, this is great, we know what we're doing, then we can add it to a few more districts as they see fit. I think you know people approach us that way. I think we're gonna learn a lot in the first year of having something like this. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I, I feel like you know this is something that we might want to like try out one year and then yeah. revisit at the end of the season. Yeah, kind of a thing. Um, however, this doesn't really. Well, you can't you can't try it out no. if you're making somebody go through the exactly. like well, that's not fair. Right, exactly. But that's why I think let's I just do the court to try yeah. out, and then I we'll think what come we'll back. Is how many people come up and ask for an application for a court? True, true. But I'm I'm looking at the last exemption: where food vendors participating in town sponsored events are not required to open, obtain a mobile food vendor permit. Site location shall be approved by public safety departments. I'd also love to say that it shall be on pavement or something like that. I mean, because I could see it happening in one of these parking lots, but not down at the beach where you were saying, you know, like I just don't want it to happen down at Pine Point because of, you know, potential. There's there's no way to stop anything. Well, be town. This one is town sponsored. Yeah, I, 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 I get it. That's summer fest. Yeah. That's a yeah. one time, yeah, yeah. one day. Where or like if um, something happens, sustainable Scarborough. Yeah, that exactly. Happens. If that happens, but I'm talking about like if they get parked somewhere, you know, say well, well in Westbrook they have mm -hmm. street eats and beats. Mm -hmm. It's at a community center. It's on a paved parking area, kind of a thing. I guess that's what I'm thinking. Is if if the town were to sponsor a regular event, event, thank you, <clears throat> that it should be in a paved parking lot. Yeah. I just, just want to have us use the same standard of care that we're asking. Or we'll use the to. prevention methods that you were discussing earlier. We're on paid. We're on, oh oh oh. So spill prevention methods, which would include you know like booms and uh, uh, cleanup pads and uh, trash bin bins and have all that available. There should be at least one of those available. Yeah, yeah. I had another question. Are uh, you going to require one fifty gallon trash can per what? So this is just some ideas. Some of this. This is for a vendor. We're now in the vendor. Yeah, now we're in the vendor licensing. So okay. this would be so. Alan's got the whole site, and me and Peter each have a truck. <laughs> so these are our requirements for our truck or trailer. Um, uh, we're saying here, in that example, Alan, you've got to supply the portal, the, the toilet facilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alan's um, doing toilets, parking, yeah, mm -hmm. lighting, lighting, permanent fixtures, the ADA spots, power, power. Trash. Um, well, no, and then then, that, then I read, we do the trash. Mm -hmm. We supply the trash barrels and well, suppose the trash barrels. And we could on a take that off because remember, I was writing this for two scenarios. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we could make it more on Alan. Yeah, we did exactly. But, but, but as I read this, though, and then yeah. set up that scenario, Autumn and I are, some, are responsible for our truck's trash, yeah. um, but Alan's not. Right. Yeah. Well, and I like the idea of the vendor having one required to have one, you know, 50 gallon drum or whatever. Plus Alan is responsible for excess collection. Yeah, collection. Yeah. No, no. Alan has to fit Alan has to figure out how much 
he's going to charge based upon how much he's required to do. Because yeah. he is required to move the trash for the food court, let's say the whole site, then he knows how much it's going to cost and that enters into how much he's going to charge mm -hmm. for the rent. If he's only required to move the trash that accumulates at the tables and the vendors are required to have their own trash, then their own trash can, who are the vendors then responsible for picking up and removing their trash can, which means they're going to take it and put it into Allen's. You know this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I, would, I would have one responsible party for the trash. Now, you can require the vendor to have a trash can. In his lease agreement with Peter. He can have whatever he he, he can have, he can have a, you know, Peter can require him to have a trash can right next to his mm -hmm. van, okay. right next to his, his truck. But then Alan, if if the lot becomes covered with trash, code is going to talk to Alan, mm -hmm. not to an individual mm -hmm. vendor. And food but, trash is treated differently than regular trash too, because when you've got a restaurant, you have to have a regular process for emptying that trash because otherwise you're attracting rats and all kinds of things so food food waste is considered a different kind of product as it were for, for right. so for the whole trap for the whole lot for the whole vendor lot my vote would be for one area one person or a party to be responsible i'll go back to the bricks and mortar analogy how does it work for brick and mortar restaurants? Do we require the owner of the building to be responsible for trash, and, and including food waste removal, or does it attach to the lessee who's responsible? That's waste management. But yeah. but when it comes through the site plan and planning board process, whoever develops it has to make sure that there's a pad for the facility is a building. facility. Yeah. It's properly screened. <laughs> so there's a little bit. Of, on each, there's the the onus is shared. And then I can't Alan will back. also require a recycling component. Thank you, Alan, because I was just going to ask you. Yeah. So, um, but I guess my, my the general point that I keep coming back to is we should first look for the analogy for the brick and mortar. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And and, and dumpsters probably part of the contract. I mean, if you've got somebody who's leasing your restaurant space, they're going to be part of the contract. Right. It's going to be how you handle waste disposal. So I guess what I'm concerned about is, because I've seen this, you have a food court and the individual, their pads, there's a, a big waste basket, great big waste basket. Well, in the summer, particularly if it's a popular spot, that, that waste basket can be overflowing all, all over the ground. So the 50 gallon, 50 gallon, thing might not be enough. What I'm just trying to wrap my mind around what happens if the waste, the garbage cans, not the big dumpster, but the garbage cans itself, themselves, overflow onto the ground. To me, that, that would be Alan's responsibility. Okay. But Alan can put it back to the vendor in the, con in the rental contract. Part of the rental contract is the vendor must have a 50 gallon trash can that must be disposed of, disposed of into the- And keep their area clean. And keep their area clean so that you have, as the owner, you have some, yeah. you have some guidelines. But if there's a consistent problem, Code talks to you. Right. Alan's on the hook. Alan's on, yeah, Alan's yeah, on, on the hook. With, with, so it's, there's a, a trickle down effect here. Yeah. Which again um, is how it would work for a brick and mortar stuff. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I apologize for this. I'm probably going to be repeating myself on how a lot the brick and mortar thing. So, yeah. Well, and I think that's a good place to start. Yeah, it, it really helps yeah. ground me. Yeah. And, yeah. Let's see, uh, signage, just something about signage is in here, so you can't do um, flyers on people's cars and things like that, and you can't do anything in the right away. Um, about feather flags and those kind of things, are those 
allowed or not allowed? It not should be part of the signage. I believe that falls under the signage ordinance. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Um, this is for the, the, this is licensing. So this is just for my and yeah. Peter's trucks. So the site could have a sign permit for their site. So the site. court. The court the could court have a sign permit. But this is just for our trucks. We can't put a bunch of stuff out and go hand out flyers and things. Many, so, many people don't realize that those those flags that people put up are supposed to be removed every night yep. and put back up in the morning, and it never happens. Yep. So what I'm seeing is so second ballot, no, <laughs> no temporary or mobile signs shall be allowed. So no, that means yeah. no feather flags. Yeah, yeah. I, for truck. For the truck. trucks can't do anything. Right. And again, so if there's a violation, we'll go back to Allen. Well, you, you, your people are putting up. Yeah, but I mean, you got to know that the truck itself is going to have its signage. It's going to have a car or whatever yeah. have its signage. So. so, what about a sandwich board? Can they put a sandwich board out front to say special of the day? Again, it's be with the truck. It says That's no. Board. Currently, it says no. But currently, it says no. So, sweet. Yeah. Impose the same requirements as first and quarter <laughs> restaurants. Yeah, they can't put a better flag out. Yeah. Didn't wear a sandwich board or anything like that? Or... Yeah, I was just saying because I think they do. I, I see a little have sandwich board sign. For their <laughs> permanent sign, and then if they put a sandwich board, let me. Out, as long as they're not impeding the sidewalk. Let me say, think about this for a moment because. Alan has come before us, the planning board, we've agreed upon the site plan. He has that responsibility. He rents to the vendors. It's up to Alan whether he wants a sandwich board or wants to allow sandwich boards because now that's something on his property that is met the site plan. It, it, well, the planning board would not say, I'm sorry, you cannot put any this is true. Um, yeah. of these types yeah. of sites on, yeah. well, it's on not your a sidewalk. Yeah, right. it's not, yeah, it's not a yeah. public sidewalk. Which is how the, 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 the lessor would handle signage from lessees yep. in a brick and mortar establishment as well. Because yep. I probably I own the sign out front, and I your lease defines your prominence on a sign, what, what things like that go. Yeah. So, yeah. so Alan can decide that it's okay to have one of those folding sandwich boards mm -hmm. in front of each of the trucks go out every morning that says, is special of the day. Okay. Yeah. So but not one of those flippy things with the fan. No. Since we're not doing the mobile food vendor site, we could probably take away some of this. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because it's that, not applicable anymore. That, this was more applicable when you were just that one vendor yeah. in a parking lot. And that's why so I think that, a I, lot of this will can go can away. Go away. And I think when you do that sort of global review for the differentiation of vendor and site. Um, and, and the clarification of, the, of, of that differentiation, some of this will actually go very clearly in one box. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's just a matter of no signs, no signs, no temporary mobile signs, blah, 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 unless you're in a, a permitted food court, you know, or court or whatever we're calling Alan's food sanctuary. I just feel like you know you can leave that in there and then just say unless you're in a permitted I like that so we can yeah. keep it yeah. just for the record Alan's happily retired you already have a yeah, just, just, just for the record well, just, just for the record sure. I have a retirement plan for having <laughs> I just like, I'm not anywhere near retirement, but I think it'll be fantastic. See, a food sanctuary has like little, little uh, like uh, uh, swamp things and kiosks where you can see this one flew in from, from New Jersey for the summer. And uh, yeah, so no, for food, the food sanctuary. Her Peter's exploding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this next section uh, is about noise, lighting, and odors. And um, this is basically. Outcry. Oye, oye. The uh, hoagies available here. Uh, and it, really, this should probably just also say adhere to the good neighbor ordinance. 
Yeah. Say it again. I'm going to uh, adhere to the good neighbor ordinance. Um, and then hours of operation. Again, I'm not sure if we even want to address this, if it's going to not worry about it in the. Is it addressed in the good neighbor? The good neighbor addresses like construction noise. Uh, and I think there's, I think there is some closing. Uh, I'm, I feel like there's lots of closing. But it, 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 right. uh, I don't think there's specific, it's just that people tend to close yeah. earlier in the winter and later in the summer. I mean, that's that's basically when it. Business stops. Uh, oh, yeah, when business stops. I'm, I'm looking at this um, in food trucks that uh, I'm familiar with. Some of them, especially if they serve breakfast, stop before seven. That's because the truckers are on yeah, there in that way. So that you might want to put that at six because it's not in a residential neighborhood, the, the, the court, the food court. Um, and so I, I there, there may be, I mean, there, there may be six folks who want to, who want to get that a breakfast sandwich uh, and head out. So maybe we don't even worry about hours of operation yeah. and we just say adhere to the good neighbor ordinance. Because if you open at eight and you're really loud, but you open at five and you're not, you know, oh, is like the that. hour... Yeah. Let's let's just do good neighbor work. Can I ask? We can always go back and change. You can always go back and say we've yeah. had a problem. So yeah. too bad, folks. We're going to put a hour limit on you. Rick, I mean, does Rick have a question? Doesn't the um, excuse me? Doesn't the good neighbor ordinance isn't it limited to noise and light? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, but it, the noise and light is based on time. It's got uh, some times in there for noise. Uh, I'm just thumbing through it now, but I, my recollection was it was noise and light. And I see what you're saying. Okay. Good. From a, from a time check standpoint, how much you've got left so that we have time for public comment? We're almost done with this. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to step away for a minute to say goodbye to my family. So. All right, Rick. I'll be back. Um, I'm thinking, with respect to odor, I'm thinking of when I was on the planning board, um, when, Conroy's, um, when Conroy's went to the new barbecue place, I, I remember there was some smell in the neighborhood and odor. And um, I personally am okay with, you know, smoky food smells and barbecues and things like that but you know maybe it's Indian food and the curry kind of bothers me or something like that so I, I'm just wondering if we should put uh in regards to unusual odor fumes I, I don't know I just are we talking about then having to put some type of air scrubber system on the vendor truck then <laughs> as as a result of that odor issue because and uh, it sounds I know it sounds far fetched, but we've had this issue come up with smokers in town, uh, smoke barbecue and things like that in town. And like I said, Indian food I would, turns my stomach. I would, I would caution against the sort of unusual because <laughs> what, okay, what could, yeah. and, and, and that becomes a matter of um, uh, I love but, 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 but I, I, I think um, I'm not sure. I mean, clearly the town has emerged to realize there's a problem with cannabis odor in. The cannabis processing facilities. Yeah. Um, I, this one, I don't think, will reach that fever pitch. Um, and it might be one of those where we where, where we see what happens because um, these are more mobile; they're only seasonal. Um, and um, yeah, I don't. I, I guess I don't know because your Indian food is my barbecue. Yeah. is exactly. part of the problem. So yeah. yeah. And that's all, and that's all the only point I was raising is I know we've had issues in the past in certain yeah. neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there's any way that we could avoid that or have some lessons learned from that. And and part of the, the, the one too, I think and this is where bricks and mortar would be different. Bricks and mortars are assumed to be permanent, not seasonal. Right. Um, and you've got a permanent structure on which to locate a structure or a scrubber 
and and and, and exactly. Um, you, you're my point exactly. Where they would have to put some kind of scrubbers on, but there's really not much you can do. On exactly, it's, it's a truck. So yeah. So I I would say we kind of leave it as is, or or leave it as un unaddressed as she is <clears throat> the current proposal has, and then we see where we go. Yeah, let me let me ask you. This has she'll not adversely impact on abutting properties. If somebody has a complaint that there's an adverse impact, where do they go? My office. And then we go smell it. Yeah. <laughs> and then and I and, mean I like the smell of all food. <laughs> and, and, and then <laughs> Yeah, I know you're making things. Yeah, gosh, yeah, God, you don't want to keep this in there, right? I will say, well, there's a need to look who's the other side. Okay, so what's, what's the next step? We do. I actually, in hindsight, would like to strike the odor from this, so it's not a conversation. Or yes, and then if it becomes an issue, because once you put something out there for someone to hang their hat on that they don't like something, yeah. maybe it's the way it smells. Yeah. And I don't know. We, we, I think I would like to take order out. Um, Easier at hand. I think so. Yes. Because I'm not prepared to give a whole process that we've been dealing with for cannabis, with cannabis for two years on how to address odor effects for food. That's really true. Okay. Yep. Which brings so, me water, fume, fumes, or smoke, all of that's going to gonna take. I'm just going to do good neighbor. I'm really just going to talk about this not event sounds outcry and then adhere to the good neighbor ordinance. Can and someone fun. then put a smoker or grill outside their truck? No, because it all has to be contained. Okay. So, okay. everything's okay. in the unit. So, most people, I would think if they were smoking meat, they would do it off site. Okay. Okay. In. Just wanted to be. Yeah, clear. So as long as we have it contained, then I think we should cover. Okay. I'm from Texas. Smokers are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just gonna put this out there. You guys say you're having a barbecue, and when I show up, it's like hot dogs and hamburgers. That is not a barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the first, risky, the first time we showed up for a neighborhood barbecue, we're like, this is this is a hamburger. This is a cookout. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> and your voice just got more southern. I know, yeah. yeah. I don't know about smoked meat. I'm like, yeah. Even clearer, more text, like, more text. Yeah. Yes, yes. Got a little bit more excited. Um, I think that's all we have with insurance and then license and then the exemption. So, yeah, I think we're, we're good. Um, I will do some magic to this, get rid of the site, and then sort of look at licensing specific court. Do put some other things to say for the future and then I think we're at a good spot and then we'll, I'll talk with Karen, she's on vacation this week and we will figure out what we can do for a Setco restaurant food truck extravaganza and maybe we'll ask them all of our examples. Uh, I, I would do a normal search and anywhere it shows up mobile vendor is, is saying is this actually vendor or is this court? Yes. yes. Those two things seem to be kind of and From some should say pad side. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Got it. <clears throat> Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. So at this point, I'm going to take it that we're going to move any conversation about parking standards and at least till our next meeting. Yes. That'd be fun. All right. Which brings me to the next item, which is public comment. And if there is some, we certainly would love to hear it. Uh, and I'm going to stay in the room because I don't think Eric has anybody outside. No one online. Okay. Thanks. So if you would please, for us, please introduce yourself as well. I'm Selena Daniel, and I represent Eminor Holdings. Uh, Jake Meshew, uh, Eminor Holdings as well. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, so we sent in a few comments um, to Autumn yesterday um, regarding what she was proposing. Um, and there's a, this, a, as you can see, there's about 11. For our background, did you just... What is MNR Holdings? Are you guys a property holding company? We represent the, the Downs. The Downs. No, okay. yeah. Sorry. Um, so, uh, do you want me to go through the list, Autumn, or how do you want to? Some of these things got resolved. Some of these things got resolved. I think you could probably just go through the big ones. I mean, just 
we all have this too. So I think you might just make your, make your case okay. and, for like what you're talking about, maybe the temporary nature of what you're actually doing. I, I would also ask that the committee refrain themselves from commenting and let uh, public comment just occur. Yeah, okay. I mean, basically what we're looking to do is create a temporary activation space. And the key thing about this is a lot of these sites around the country and around New England, it's a key piece to really getting the development going, getting a buzz for the community to come in and meet and see kind of the construction process and the whole nine. Basically make a welcoming space for, for people to watch buildings going on and as well as meet, uh, have a movie night, you know, maybe have like a yoga class or a cycle class um, as well as be able to enjoy good food and drink. But yeah, some of the key things that, and this is obviously very uh, early on in stages, um, but some things that we noticed or noted really are gonna be like restrooms. Like what are we doing for restrooms? And for us, probably, probably we think temporary restrooms. Does that mean a port party? I don't know. Does that mean like what Rock Row has where they have a, basically a conics box like thing? set in the ground with a ladder in a protected area with a conditioned space that's ADA accessible. So that's kind of one thing that we'd like some more clear um, direction on. Because as Jake indicated, this is a, this area is a temporary space for whites to come. Right. So we'll have brick and mortar restaurants. So we'll have a meeting space if they have an area like a park, the small parklet for people. So this court is not going to be a permanent structure going forward. This is just to get us, as he indicated, people involved, people, the community coming together, especially the residents. Yeah. Um, we've heard at the Downs would like to have this sort of, like not event space, but an area for people to, you know. Community space. Yes, a community space, so. So some of these things, as you indicated, are permanent. So for us, permanent restrooms is, we just need better clarification on that, um, as well as the pad sites, we indicated they need to be paved. So for us, that may not be a parking lot later on, that may be a green space for us. So we, just like Rock Row, they do have the gravel, yeah. um, they're on like gravel. Uh, it's basically what it's compacted gravel, and then kind of in the event space area, it's more of like a piece of um, with a little fire pit, and then their connex boxes kind of around with a tent basically where you can get cover from the sun or you know, sitting there where it's a little bit more climate controlled. Uh, and I think for us, a big thing that I know food is considered, you know foods or types of alcohol, it's all kind of considered in there, but there hasn't been a lot of talk on that and like in terms of licensing and stuff like that. I think that's got a big thing for us. Yeah, I think the way it's written, you, everybody has to get a liquor license. Right. So right. I think as long as, I'll just double check with the clerk, as long as your vendors get a liquor license right. for their truck. Yeah, it was a little confusing and yeah. that's the wording. It yeah, said yeah. no liquor and then it said you could get. Yeah, so. yeah, no, that's a great point. Um, because like I'm just grabbing it from other places. Right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> I mean, again, I'm going back to Rock Row where they sure. do have a connex box. Yeah, I don't think the intent is to prohibit it. It's okay. Just, so we'll yeah. that. And I got, and I think you had said in their um, mobile. So again, they're like, like, can we put a connex box? Can we, you know, if it's going to be kind of a site pad core. Yeah. Like the liquor area. More permanent. Like a permanent. Like a permanent. More permanent, but temporarily permanent. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like any in between. Like <laughs> That's the kind of thing. Permanent, not permanent, but temporary. Defined to help me with that shit. Uh, like over, you know, a three to five year period or less. 
depending on how construction five years feels pretty permanent. Yeah, yeah. maybe we back I mean, off guess, five years. Yeah, I, <laughs> five years. I think but it's how true. successful the yeah. area is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just yeah. don't know. You know yeah. some of the, um, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but it sounds like some of the things you're talking about are really kind of the site plan discussion. So as long as the ordinance is written for a little bit of flexibility, you can have that discussion. I'm trying to write this ordinance with whole town. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So I think as long as I put in the appropriate flexibility, then the planning board can say, mm, yeah, you could have a restroom trailer. Okay, cool. But if you're there for more than 24 months, then we need something. Right. Something like that maybe could happen. Uh, I think those things are doable. And we do conditions like that with other permanent, you know, brick and mortar. Right. Certain conditions can last for a certain period of time, and then um, we've done things like that. So I think that can be flexible. And and and, and two to really be honest is we want to be cost effective for the community and for the vendors too that are going to come in there. You know, we we start putting pavement down and. Land, you know, hundred thousand dollars worth of landscaping and stuff like that. So that's just stuff that we we want to kind of be upfront about about just trying to lay that out because these spaces aren't going to be forever permanent either. And we have to pass those costs on if it's too costly for a vendor right. to actually they come in, come. then it doesn't. Right. It kind of defeats the purpose. So. One well, as we were going through this, I wrote a note to myself that. All of our commercial design standards, I need to extract what will apply and make this specific to this. So we're not trying to say, you know, I need articulation on your blah, blah, blah. Or anything. So I've got to tweak that a bit to make okay. this work. I guess that was another question yeah. for me. Yeah. So Can I come to this committee, like what your your pared down landscaping requirements <laughs> would be. I'll bring it back next time. This okay. now I have a really good idea of what. Yeah, and I, it, it's just hard to react to something without a sketch plan or something like that, too. So, and I don't think it's necessarily this committee's role to react to a sketch plan, um, no. but to talk more <laughs> about the long term requirements, you know, kind of thing. So. Yeah, yeah. I'll add, um, I'll extract what we talked about. We were specifically like worried about lighting and yeah. maybe a little bit of buffering. We'll see. I'll see what we could apply and then bring it into. So it, this would not have to go through the full commercial design standards or maybe the full site plan process. So would it be an exemption? Yes. Well, yeah. I'm just like, I got to work on that. Rachel's yeah. shaking her head at me. You should. Yeah. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. and, and I am not going to comment anymore since this is something that might come before. Oh, yeah. This sounds like this is not even part of the site, the um, the vendor, uh, the vendor site plan that we were talking about. This is kind of its own thing. Because we would approve, or, or we would have an ordinance for the um, the vendor's mobile food vendor site that would assume it's in perpetuity. In my mind, we took the mobile food vendor site off the conversation. Off the table. So we're just talking about but the today. court. Yeah, no, the court. But um, I'm sorry, the court. But I just feel the court would be in perpetuity, right? Yes. So, which is why I say this sounds. But what we're what talking about here, to do is a little it's not really different. a vendor food court, it's some, right. something different. Yeah. So yeah, okay. It's a food court, but it's like a temporary situation. Yeah, so, so it's, it's for me, I'm trying to focus on the, the, the town the, what we talked about, today, how this relates to what we talked about. Yeah. Yep. Uh, catch slide, so. Are you all set? Yeah. Um, yeah, you guys are kind of those generators. Yeah. And I get that too. Um, I think depending on the size of all these places, maybe it comes out of one versus multiple vendors. But I think the I think there's other things that we can think about too for to keep generators quiet. And I understand the scope, so there's stuff like that that I think there's way more thinking that needs to go into it. But I don't know if we want to, in our opinion, just take that right off the table, um, especially for you know, bring in infrastructure uh, sites. Transform pads close to the marsh, yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I think it's and to your point, I think it's by zones, and I think it can matter if it's not as residential or if it is more residential and stuff like that. I just that's our concern, I would say. I think that one is a good one when we do have the meeting with the people who do the actual food trucks yeah. and restaurants. I think that would be a good one. It's like, this is how we have it written now. Uh, we'll have feedback. I think we should. Stay strong and prohibit it for now. I agree. And then see what we get. 
Yeah, I mean, for us, we because want to mean, Even in a temporary system. situation, you could set up temporary power. Yeah, and there's, there's ways. It's not that out of the box. Okay. Yeah. It is now 930. Um, if we are going to go around for comments, we should probably start doing so. Um, Autumn? My only comment is this is Eric's last day, and I'm going to miss him tremendously, but we wish him Technically, we're going to be in trouble, I can tell, coming in. <laughs> <laughs> now you know why I stopped bringing you home. <laughs> uh, John? Uh, so yesterday, we were reviewing our TIF CA policy, and um, we talked about the need to include more language in there about an expanded public process, potentially. And there was some feedback about, do we pull in long range as part of that approval process going forward. So potentially there could be some changes to that policy where we may look to this committee and others to provide input um, as part of the public process. And then there was also a council goal meeting um, where we were talking about the Gorm connector. And I think there's a desire to get more input from committees. So there's a potential resolution that we might be coming together that may tie into getting specific feedback from committees like this one, transportation, um, conservation, to help inform next steps and decisions. So that could be coming to this committee in the future. John, would that resolution ask the committee to answer specific questions? I think it's still kind of okay. in process. Like it could be help to provide us key questions we should be asking MTA, or it could be if there is a new solution that's proposed in the future, making sure that it's vetted through our committees as a part of our public process to make sure that we're getting official feedback um, going forward. So it could be both, it okay. could be one or the other, it's, it's still in process. Okay. Eric? Uh, I don't have anything. I just really wanted to thank you guys for all your time and for your service to the town. I, I lived here for three years and just moved out last week. So I'm certainly going to miss it here, and I have the utmost confidence in all of you and Autumn. Her leadership has been incredible here with the town. Um, you guys aren't making it easy. This is an amazing job, and whoever comes in is going to be incredibly fortunate to work with the whole town, but especially this group. So cool. thank you all for your for your support and for everything you've done. Okay. Thank you. Good luck here. I'm all set, other than best of luck to Eric. All right, Judy. I was wondering how the work of this committee dovetails with the open space plan. So when you're talking about parking, when you're talking about siting food trucks, adding impervious surfaces, how does that dovetail with the open space plan? So that was one question I had. And um, the other question I had is, may not be appropriate for this committee, but are there regulations for landscaping for both residential and commercial areas that require uh, sustainable plantings, indigenous plantings, anything like that? So the, the first question, um, so my role is the planning director and I work very closely with the sustainability manager. I'm here. Oh, my role is the planning director. I work side by side with the sustainability manager mm -hmm. and the town engineer. And I sort of oversee the whole relationship between the open space plan and anything we're doing in here. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my role. And then we do have uh, commercial landscaping. Right. We just passed officially June 26th, yay. Mm -hmm. uh, and it does have, it's, there's a great plant list that was vetted um, thoroughly and for a long time. Uh, for indigenous and native species. We don't have requirements for residential uh, landscaping other than street trees for some right, that's, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'm also a representative on the Open Space Committee, and unfortunately I did miss the last meeting, like July 25th-ish kind of a thing. But I can assure you that there, <clears throat> that usually I come back to this committee and say this and this are happening, but um, like I missed the last meeting, so I need to actually get myself caught up. But I'm glad to 
um, update you one on one. Thank you. Um, absolutely. I just want to reiterate thank you to Eric and then also thank you to John for sharing with us that the TIP and CEA policies are if updated and even the messages from MTA. And I'd love to, <clears throat> I, I really welcome you sort of like a catch us up presentation to hear on what's happening with MTA um, because I definitely have some questions that I'd like to, to share with the group. I'm also on the uh, vulnerability assessment uh, committee and there, the amount of work being done is tremendous. The amount of talent on that committee is tremendous from Nick Rico to Pete Slavinsky. I'm like, woo, I, I, love, I love having all these smart people in the room from SACO talk about what we can do to really make our, our town as resilient and uh, sustainable as possible. So um, there'll be some more information on that. And I, I just thank you all for the conversations today that were really robust and, and wonderful. And I do have to run out the back door. So thank you for, Thanks. for, for time. Portia. Well, transportation, and although Peter is actually the yeah. representative, transportation is not meant for a while. We're still waiting for the permission to come back from the consultant. So that's where that one is. I'm also on the vulnerability committee, which is <clears throat> the combination of information. I mean, it is just my thought. It is my thought. So we do have a public meeting on Monday. Yes. Okay. So. Thank you, Rachel. Um, we still are dealing with FedEx, the issues around that facility. Uh, Intermed has presented its first um, application to us for a facility at the Downs. Um, and that's a facility that uh, is connect is right next to the town center. Um, in line with that, we have on September, 9th or 10th? September 9th. September 9th, we have a site walk um, where the Downs is going to talk to us uh, out there about what the, uh, the plans are currently for the town center. Um, I've asked uh, Autumn to make sure that that is actually uh, publicized so that um, other committees that have a concern about that uh, and members of the public uh, can be involved as well. Because it's a site walk, there are some protocols, so there's not a Q&A that's going to go on, but folks will have a chance to hear uh, right at the beginning what we're starting to look at at that center. Um, that will be followed up uh, prior to the uh, September meeting uh, by a workshop um, from the Downs and between the workshop, between the Downs and the, uh, uh, the planning board, where we'll start to really take a, a closer look at um, what's going to what's going to be presented to us, what's going to go on there. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Rick, if you can be available for the next meeting to chair. September, September 13, right? Yeah, I believe that's yes. what it is. I would appreciate that. I'm in the air in terms of surgery for my <laughs> knee. So I'm not exactly sure whether I'm going to be able to be here or not. So I may need I, you for that will, meeting. I'll plan on it. Okay, thank you. Um, outside of that, I mean, I can't believe summer's almost over. But <laughs> here we go again. Welcome to Maine. <laughs> so if nothing else, we've already mentioned the next meeting is September the 13th. Chair would entertain a motion. Move, move to adjourn. To adjourn. We have a motion and a second. Rick. Rick, a second. Thank you very much. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a nice week.